The day after the wedding, we woke up to a cloudy, rainy morning, which made us feel even more fortunate that our wedding day was so sunny and beautiful. So we are just about ready to head out. Pat went to pull the car around and it looks like the rain is kind of slowing down. I'm just walking through, doing my final check, making sure we didn't miss anything. This was a nice room. It's big, much bigger than our house. Shower was good, very long, hot showers, more than four minutes, so that was the, the luxury of this experience. But a uh, great space for us to both be able to get ready in, because we had this whole sitting area. And uh, we can even see just a little bit of the ocean all the way out there, a tiny little ocean view. And now we are going to hit the road and uh, we have about a five hour drive to get up to Salem. We made several trips up and down the three flights of stairs, bringing all our stuff to the car. And then we stopped at the continental breakfast area to grab a bite to eat and some coffee before getting on the road and getting this honeymoon road trip started. We got one last look at beautiful Spring Lake, and we're really looking forward to coming back here on our anniversary. That's one of the reasons we picked Spring Lake for the location of our wedding. As we left the area, we drove past the gazebo where we had the ceremony the day before, and you can see on the left side here, there's some construction going on. The day before, Patrick went to get sandwiches and he saw the construction and asked them when they were going to be done. And they were done just before we started the ceremony. So very lucky we didn't have a jackhammer in the background of our wedding ceremony. So here's our drive. We were going from Spring Lake up to Winter Island Park outside of Salem. And we had to skirt around New York, unfortunately. We would not have planned it this way if we were starting from a different location, but we had to kind of hug the coast and swing up to the east to get over towards Salem. And this area, of course, is notorious for traffic and congestion, and it lived up to that challenge. We passed the famous American Dream Mall and then headed toward Fort Lee and over the George Washington Bridge. And this was definitely the most stressful portion of the trip. We had to pay extremely close attention to the GPS. Patrick had to watch the traffic patterns so closely. I was trying to make sure that he was prepared to move over and get the correct exit. So the whole time that we were driving here, it was just very intense. We just kept thinking, thank goodness we don't have the scamp because if you were towing something trying to do this drive, it would be 10 times more stressful. So thank goodness for that. Today's our longest travel day of the trip and hopefully the most difficult travel day, uh, which we figured we would get it out of the way uh, the first day when we're excited to be out and about. But we, we got past New York, that was a little crazy, and now we're coming up to Hartford, Connecticut. And then the last big obstacle will be getting around Boston and into Salem. And that's where, on the map, there's a lot of traffic around Boston. And uh, when I was planning the trip, the drive time today was supposed to be five hours, just under five hours. But you have to take into consideration, especially on the East Coast, driving's a little crazy, the roads get traffic really easily, they just get super congested. So for a little while we were driving and our drive time was not going down because there were accidents and lots of construction. So we've been driving and driving um, and at this point we're supposed to get there around 7 um, but we haven't gotten through rush hour yet so we will see how the traffic develops through rush hour. But the other thing is, 
we're on these very major roads and there's no rest stops. There's no like place to pull off and get coffee or anything like that. We stopped for lunch at what they call a texting area, which is just like bathrooms and basically like uh, a truck inspection station. And I made cereal on the hood of the car and um, that's what we ate for lunch. So, which is fine. That's why we have food with us, but kind of weird that we can't like stop and get coffee or anything. Two and a half hours to go. We normally like to keep our drive time to around two to three hours, so this was a big push for us. And even though there was a lot of red on the map as we approached the Boston area, it was actually better than I think it could have been just because it was late when we got there, so we were after rush hour. So I think that worked in our favor. But as we pulled into Salem, it was all worth it. The town was so cute, and especially as we made our way into Winter Island Park, it's this little peninsula that sticks out into the ocean. We knew that we made a good decision. I'm gonna park just to the right of that sign. Okay. Um, I see a rock up there, so let me... Oh yeah, I see it. Oh yeah. yeah. Luckily, we were still able to check in late, and the host was very friendly. Go Jeep, go. <laughs> yeah. They won't offer it. And at this point, we were just so glad to be getting out of the car finally. Okay, good. Perfect. We were at tent site 38, mostly because this was one of the only spots left when I booked this just a couple weeks earlier. I guess I'll just leave my bag there for now. Yeah, let's just do the tent yeah. to start because it's getting dark. It was a pretty big challenge planning this trip so last minute. 30. This is definitely a busy summer of travel for a lot of people, <laughs> and it was hard to find open campsites. Hey, he was saying this is one of the only sites that's kind of tucked back, so it's a little more private. Oh, neat. That'll do. Okay. That was a big reason why we ended up driving so far on our first night. I guess that's like a walking trail, so we will have people like walking through, but yeah. <laughs> See if that goes down to the water. It was so hard to tell when I was booking it if there were like plants or anything around or if it was just open. Like I really couldn't tell. So, but this is neat. We took a quick walk down to the beach to check out the water. This was the moment when I finally felt like we were on vacation. I like this one. We made it through the festivities of the wedding. We survived that very long and stressful drive to get up here. And now we were enjoying this beautiful rocky coastline, which was exactly what I pictured for our trip up to New England. So it finally felt like it was time to relax and settle in and enjoy. So we headed back to the campsite to get our tent set up and to settle in. We left the hotel this morning at I think a little after 11.30 and we got here at about 7.30 so it was a, a full, a very full travel day and about halfway through there I was kind of questioning my planning on this trip of doing such a long drive on the first day, especially because it was longer than either of us really thought. And, and challenging. The driving through New York was just not fun at all. That traffic was intense, but Patrick did a great job with the driving. We are here before dark, which was the goal, and the water looks beautiful. So all worth it. We're gonna get set up. We're gonna do our official start to camping which is usually a meal of some sort of noodles and uh, getting all our sleeping gear set up. So now we're like switching gears. I feel like we have to do a hard shift from wedding mode to camping and travel mode. It's quite different from, from a luxury Victorian hotel to sleeping on the ground, but that's how we like to do it. We like the contrast. We like the switch because we were both saying that if we were staying in a hotel tonight, it would just get kind of repetitive. And it's really nice that we have the, the stargazer open. So if the weather is good, 
we just get to sleep with uh, this really great ocean breeze. So it's gonna, I think it's gonna be a good night. I think you can tell off the bat, this is one of the better camping sites in this place. It is. He said it's the only one that is not right in the parking area. We're like tucked back a little bit. Yeah. So it's nice when I pick a random number and it not works really. out. Yeah. Well, when you look at the map, it's so hard to tell what's yeah. a good site. So very nice. As we finished setting up our campsite, we were pleasantly surprised by all of the sounds of nature. We could hear the birds and we could even hear the ocean a little bit in the background as the tide was starting to come in. But we were warned that we needed to keep an eye out for the raccoons, which are not afraid of people whatsoever. He's climbing down. <laughs> Jeez. All right, Mr. Raccoon, we see you. You're not stealthy. <laughs> I don't think he cares, though. Critters are coming out. Jeez. We are really used to camping in areas that have bears, so we automatically keep a super clean campsite and put our food away immediately. So once the raccoon figured out he was not getting any free meals, he moved along without an issue. But this campground does not use animal safe trash cans, and that's a big problem because the raccoons have gotten used to free meals and they are everywhere at night. So you definitely have to keep an eye out and always be careful of your food storage when you're camping so that you don't train the wildlife. The next morning I woke up to a perfect beautiful day. This is why I love our stargazer tent because when the weather is good we leave the rain fly open and you can immediately see the sun and the leaves and the flowers around you. It just gives you such a stronger connection to nature when you are camping and when you don't have to be completely enclosed by your rain fly. The air smelled sweet because there were so many flowers around us, but I was eager to take the very short walk from our campsite down to the waterfront. We were able to hear the ocean overnight. Anytime I woke up, I could hear the waves because we were that close and the tide was coming in. This is one of those areas that has really big tide shifts. The beach looks completely different at low tide than it does at high tide. And here you can see the rocks are still visible, so the tide has come in a little bit, but it's not all the way in. All along the beach were pink and white wild roses that smelled amazing. I couldn't get over how different this beach looks compared to the beaches in New Jersey. The sand is a different color and texture, the rocks are completely different, and the water is definitely colder, so we weren't going to be doing any swimming at this beach. But I took my usual morning time to relax and explore the campground a little bit while Patrick was sleeping. and recovering from that super intense drive that he did the day before. But I was eager to get things started because once Patrick was up and we were ready to go, today was going to be our day to explore Salem. Make sure that you are subscribed and hit that notification bell so that you can come along with us as we let new adventures begin in Salem, Massachusetts. And if you'd like to support the production of our videos, head over to our Patreon page where for as little as a dollar you can join our Patreon team and get early access to our videos. And during that time, they do not have advertisements on them. But most of all, thank you so much for being here and enjoying this trip with us. We have so much more to share with you from New England.
justice the next president to be the news and watch here your career it's time for you to face those fears and it's all fair to be aware and i'll be there so don't be scared just take a deep breath of air and one two three to ten you begin to focus again and no time flies we have enough to realize this bigger than the both of us